Uh, good morning. Uh, we are in our last few days here at uh, this specific setting where we are in the midst of uh, grief as well as celebration. Uh, we are leaving people who we love so dearly and a community which uh, we have become a vital part of because the people have accepted us so well. I want to say I'm thankful for working with these local pastors. Uh, most of the churches, larger churches particularly, we've preached in at some occasion. Uh, the Born East District where we have spoke at uh, a number of their major events. And also, we want to thank uh, our wonderful members who have been so active in this community, one of two of the most active churches that it is in the entire valley. We thank God for the few things that we have accomplished uh, which we feel so strongly about. We thank God for the opportunity of serving on the Community Development Board of this county, the Community Action Agency that governs Head Start in this area, uh, the role that this community allowed me to play in leading the ministers to save the one cent sales tax that supports the school system, as well as the partnership with Reverend Stiggers, who was the moderator at that specific period of time, organizing the pastors in this area to save that specific tax. Uh, we also uh, are thankful for the awesome team of leaders that we have had here at Gutzel and Power Chapel. Uh, one of my mentors, you say you can't do much with the people, but you sure can't do anything without them. But I thank God who has surrounded me with a very powerful team of awesome leaders. We thank our senior citizens, our young at heart, adopting families, adopting people in the nursing homes anonymously, a United Methodist women for the wonderful things they do, us also in adopting families. Uh, we are thankful for um, Powell Chapel. At one juncture, we had a team of uh, leaders who went out to the middle school to tutor, and then we had the elementary school coming to the church to be tutored. We thank God for uh, Power Chapel, which has the largest back to school festival, which is called Back to School Bash. Uh, Dr. T. Smith uh, with Unite Mentoring, we thank God that we were able to partner with them and also channel resources in their direction in order to help those young people. And let me also share that uh, we're thankful for Goodso, uh, the independent work they've done as far as tutoring from third grade all the way through college, having a, uh, a summer math and reading lab uh, where uh, they have had up to 67 children and 30 volunteers at one juncture tutoring for free, tutoring through the school year, tutoring during the summer. We're thankful to God for our Juneteenth celebration, which we will not be actively having this year. But Juneteenth to black people is the same thing that the Passover is to the Jews. The, uh, the original Jews, uh, because it was when they were liberated from slavery, the fastest growing holiday in the entire nation. And I thank God that we had the biggest Juneteenth in this area. 
and the most ecumenical, Chinese, Japanese, Native Americans, Koreans, whites, country and Western hip hop. And our theme has always been educate while we celebrate because I'm under the presupposition that we celebrate too much and educate too little. I wanna look at a word from Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 18th verse. Uh, and our message uh, comes from the scripture, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. I wanna talk about the church must stand up. I am, would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Tracy Burkett uh, for her invitation to speak at the NAACP protest celebration in center yesterday. I'm thankful that both of my PPR chairpersons uh, from Goodsell and Powell Chapel, Adrian Holloway, as well as Trudy Johnson Tooney, as well as some of my future members at Lakeside United Methodist Church and people from around the country. And uh, we thank God for the leadership that Tracy has displayed uh, throughout the years. I first met her when I was the NAACP president in Anniston working with the late civil rights leader, Dr. N.Q. Reynolds, as well as Gordon Rogers, who was the NAACP president during the time when Rosa Parks led the protest that culminated in the Montgomery bus boycott. Uh, and Dr. Rogers was also my dentist. Uh, I am convinced, Lindsay, that there's no one in their right minds who can deny the fact that this world is in trouble. I have never seen, Rev. Williams, the trouble of like we have today at any time in my lifetime, Natalie. As we look at this nation, state, town, there is trouble almost everywhere. We, we, we are suffering from sickness. We're suffering from disease. We're suffering from racism, sexism, violence. And, 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 and almost any kind of sin that you can imagine. In fact, without doubt, all hell has broke out. And the problem is the church won't speak up and the church won't speak out. We're a hush mouth about what we ought to be blabber mouth about. And we're a blabber mouth kin about what we need to be hush mouth about. But Jesus said, we who are the believers ought to be the salt of the earth. And salt is no good if it's in the salt shaker. Salt, salt has got to get down in the boiling hot water in order to do food any good. Salt has got to get down in the meat if it's gonna be any good. And Jesus went on to say that we are the light of the world. And when he said we are the light of the world, he wasn't talking about the tail light. He was talking about the head light. And if this world is going to get any better, I'm big enough fool to believe it's because of God's people. Because uh, something is seriously wrong. When our children get into crime before they get into Christ, when they get into jail before they get into Jesus, get into pistols before they get into prayer, get messed up before they can get blessed up, and sometimes die joys before they get a chance to live. And when we look at all of the mess that's going on today, we have incompetent man in the White House who could have saved thousands of lives if he wasn't trying to unravel the policies, Barbara, 
of a black man who had been in the White House. In fact, he wouldn't have been elected if there had not been a black man in the White House. And we're in a world pandemic where thousands have died unnecessarily deaths because he dismantled the, the programs that was in place in order to counter this pandemic. We're having wildfires, mudslides, floods, tornadoes, just riding, looting, protesting throughout the land, racist police who are paid by our tax monies and shooting down mostly unarmed black men. And while our clergy brothers who are white and, uh, uh, and, 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 and sometimes black sit by idly, and become chaplains of white racism and supremacy. And those who say that they are pro-life support the death penalty, which is a conflict. You can't be pro-life and against life at the same time. And they are in support of legislation, Clara, to cut off programs that help these young people after they're born as well as their poor and struggling parents and against raising the minimum wage when they have the maximum. They're against the health care of the poor when they got the best health care in the world. And they support policies that are anti-poor. And Jesus said, whatsoever you've done unto the least of these, you've also done unto me. And it's sad when we have all of these problems and we have a church on every corner. You can almost fall out of a church and roll in another church, but most of them are not doing anything. And many of us don't know the difference between a church and a church house. The church is not confined to a house. The church is not confined to a building. The church is in you. And the church, Nicola, is in me. Because the church is a body of believers that are drawn out from the world in order to change the world, in order to save the world, in order to redeem the world, to bring the kingdom of God on earth like it is in heaven, as Jesus told his disciples. And if I could paraphrase the late great Reverend Dr. Joe Elkos Lowry, he said, God is not as much concerned about us making a heavenly home as he is concerned about us making our homes heavenly. The, 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 the church house has its origins it, in, in, in a movable marquee in the wilderness and symbols for the church is the marquee, various buildings to the temple of Solomon and then send it to the celestial city in the book of Revelations where the building is as high as it is wide. But the marquee in the wilderness where there was on the move from bondage, from Egyptian Pharaoh on the way to the promised land. And after that, that they were sup oppressed and suppressed and depressed by one nation after another, from the Egyptians to the Babylonians, from the Babylonians to the Syrians, from the Syrians to the Medo-Persians. And now, under Jesus, they are being oppressed by the Romans. And they were looking for a desire to deliver them out of the condition that they were in. And although they had different factions yesterday, like we have different factions today, the zealots believe in the violent overthrow of the Roman Empire. The Herodians truly believe it, that they were, they were uh, supposed to obey Herod and that if they behaved Herod, Herod would change his mind and change his heart and things would eventually get better. The Essenes believe that 
there would be peace if they separated from the wicked and evil ways of the Roman Empire. The Pharisees thought that if they dotted every I and crossed every T in the Mosaic law, and then they, they got rid of the outcasts and prostitutes and tax collectors and obeyed the law, then God would step in and deliver them from bondage. But God sent Jesus to set the captives free. And I like to say uh, 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 God became like us in order to show us how to become like him. But Jesus came not only to set us free from bondage, but he came to set us free from the sins of men. And that's what Luke is talking about in his first sermon in Luke 4, chapter 16 to the 18th verse. Elois, when he said, I've come to preach good news to the poor and good news to the poor. Mean Mary that the poor won't be poor no more. But this word poor comes from a Greek word that means oppressed. People who are pressed down, people who carry the weight of the world on their shoulder. Jesus also went on to say that he came to preach, to give freedom to the prisoner, recover the sight of the blind. This word blind don't mean blind as can't see. But this word means blind. It, it, it's a Greek word that's, that's, that, that uh, is translated opaque. It means smoky because people in power, they keep people blinded from the truth with lies and smoke screens and other kind of foolishness to keep their minds off of reality. And Jesus went on to say that he came to bring in the year of the Jubilee where there would be no more poor people in the land where Barbara the taxes would be abated and all of God's children would be free. And, and, and Jesus came to end the oppression of his people to heal the broken heart, which is another term if you translate it in the Greek. It also means oppress and to set the captives free and bring in this year of the Jubilee. And Jesus identified with the Pope. Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. And a lot of times in the church, when we're talking about sin, everybody want to look out the window. That's why I'm glad I passed the churches that got stained glass windows that you can't look out the window. But a lot of times when we're talking about sin, we need to be looking Darlene in the mirror. And when we look at Jesus and study the scripture, we see where Jesus was a menace to the society. Jesus challenged the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus tore up the political order. Jesus rearranged the educational order. Jesus shook up the religious order to such an extent that they got with the government, the Roman government, and had him crucified on a cross on Calvary. And, 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 and Jesus left his presence. That's what Matthew is talking about. He left his presence in the world in his church. And he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Janice, what Jesus is saying, if we're going to be God's church, we got to move on hell and the world rather than hell and the world moving on the church. One of the, the most depressing things I see, Reverend Patrick, is that when I go through cities and see churches with burglar bars on them, that means that the church is running from the world rather than the church uh, running the world. In fact, some of my listeners today in my church in Hobson City can tell you that when we were in Hobson City, I was able to organize the preachers, and we got out on the corner on the drug dealers' territories when the police refused to police that community and clean up our own community. That's what the church ought to do. Men ought to be men. My grandma had a saying, talking about there's a difference between a man and just breath and britches. 
Man ought to have some backbone, ought to stand up, protect his women and his children. And our men has got to stand up and be counted. I'm thankful for that march yesterday in center where we had Native American presence. We had whites, blacks, young people who had never been involved anymore, and a lot of women. But we have very few men, instead of men leading their households, standing up, protecting and respecting their women and children, our men have, have gone down. And somehow, men, we've got to be involved in the church because God is counting on all of us. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail in it. And Jesus said this about the church in Revelation. He said, I wish the church would either be hot or cold, but because it is not hot or cold, I will vomit it out my mouth. In other words, a church that's lukewarm make God sick of the stomach. People need to see the church at its best. And, 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 and we are only blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. And when people need something, they ought to come to the church. When the people were hungry, Jesus fed them with two fish and five barley loaves. When the people needed healing from their sickness, Jesus healed them from all manners of sickness. When the children needed direction, Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And so if we're going to be like Jesus, we must stand up and be the church because People need to see the church be the church. And I don't care what the politician says, what the media says. I don't care what the sociologist says, the criminologist says, the ethnologist says, the psychologist says, the biologist says, or the geochronologist or any other ologist say. If the church going to be the church. The church has got to stand up. And let me tell you that the devil will continue to move on our world, move on our nation, move on our state, move on our cities, our homes, and on us if we don't be the church. You, 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 you don't have a middle ground. Either you're on God's side or either you're on the side of the devil. There, 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 there's no, you can't straddle the fence. As the Sunday school lesson said, today, you, you, you can't wobble, hobble between two opinions. You got to be on God's side or you're either on the world's side. You can't hunt with the rabbits and run with the hounds. And, 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 and you, you can't run with the hounds and hunt. You, you can't run with the rabbits and hunt with the hounds. You, 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 you got to help people by making sure that they have what they need. You, you got to help people make sure that they have meat on their street, have something sound while they're around myriad and, and on the ground. And it's not just enough to feed people a few canned goods when they're physically hungry. We need to feed people's souls. Jesus said, man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that, pre that proceeded forth from the mouth of God. And so if the soul is not fed, the person will still be hungry. Leader, we, we can't just house people. We have to make sure that their lives is built on a firm foundation. And, and, and there's a big difference between a church member and a follower of Jesus. We, 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 we got a, a lot of church members. We don't have enough church members. But we have very few followers of Jesus. A member is just somebody who just come and sit in a church. 
every now and then, but a follower is someone who will give everything they have to God. A follower gives their prayers, their presence, their gift, their service, and their witness to God. A follower is born again. A follower don't mind serving people because they are not dishing out favors. They're paying back a debt to God that they know they can't pay, but they're trying to pay it because of God's goodness, love, and mercy of what God has done for them. And then there's another thing about a follower. They are committed to Jesus to go and make disciples. And that's the main thing is making disciples. A disciple just means a follower. We ought to all be making followers of Jesus Christ. Every Christian Janice is a leader because our job is to lead people to Christ. And Jesus said, go. He didn't say go if you feel like it. He didn't say go if you want to go. He just used this little word go which is a word that's hard to understand by most people. And if I could get it down to where the chickens can get it, as grandma used to say, I would just tell you that the word go means go. Get up and go. Go is the opposite of stay. And God's church need to be on the go. And let me tell y'all something. God's church need to be all Needs all kind of people. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talked about in his writings and his speeches about the church becoming an irrelevant social club. He talked about the church must be engaged in fighting evil and social justice suit. And, 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 and we can't discriminate against anybody. Because God didn't discriminate against us. But we've got to the point where we are discriminators of other people. you got some educated people. Don't want so-called educated people in the church. It's sad when we got some people of certain social status. Don't want people of low social status in their church. we got people who get, uh, get a dollar or two above rent money. And they move out of the community and, and leave the so-called hood. And it's the hood because you don't have a neighbor in the hood. Rather than running from the people, you need to be running to the people. We're so sad now that we got silk stocking churches that don't want cotton stocking people. We need, but we need cotton stocking people because silk stocking people can pay, but cotton stocking people can pray and that silk stocking people might have clout, but cotton stocking people can shout. And whether you know it or not, something is wrong with all of us because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus is commanding us to go. We, 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 we don't want to go. We, we, we don't go to the courthouse until we've been charged. We don't go to the hospital unless we're sick. We don't go to the jail house unless we've been arrested. We don't go to the school until our child's in trouble. We don't go to the shot house until we want to drink. Uh, but if we're going to follow Jesus, we got to go. Jesus said, I must work the work of him who sent me. For the night is coming when no man will be able to work. We got to work this thing out. Night is coming. Night can come any time of the day. It can come mostly when you least expect it. And we're here for one reason, to work. And when we've done what we could, he will understand and say, well done. And then we need to stop playing church. We, 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 we don't need a playing church. We need a praying church. We got to stop praying on each other and start praying for each other. We got to stop turning on each other 
and turn to each other. We got to be proactive instead of reactive. We got to lead the world rather than let the world lead us. We got to be the head and not the tail. People need to see the church in order to be the church. They can't be what they can't see. And so it's time to stop being a tight church and be the right church. It's time to stop being a sliding church and be a tithing church. It's time to stop spreading gossip and spread the gospel. It's time for the church to stand up. It's time for the church to stand up because many of our people are functionally illiterate in an age of our, our knowledge exposed. It's time for the church to stand up because 54% of Alabama's prisons are black and many of them are high school Dropouts, it's time for the church to stand up and 30% of us don't belong to anything worthwhile, not the ADC. The NAACP, it's time for the church to stand up. The black man's child is a hundred times more likely to be sent to prison than they are to be sent to college. It's time for the church to stand up because we are still targets of experimentation, incarceration, behavior, modification, least of miseducation, and ultimate determination. It's time for the church to stand up until hateful folks love up, stand up until frowning folks smile up, stand up, to lazy folks work up, stand up, to crazy folks wise up, stand up, to quiet folks speak up, stand up, to noisy folks shut up, stand up, to lying folks fess up, stand up, until sleeping folks fess up, stand up, until stingy folks pay up, stand up, until Crooked folks straighten up. It's time for the church to stand up. Because you can't burn the church up. They tried to burn up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can't eat up the church. The lions couldn't bow down. You can't drown the church. Because Moses put down his rod and God parted the Red Sea. And God turned a seaway into a freeway. It's time for the church to stand up. God bless you. Thank you for living, for listening. Thank you for listening. And I love each and every one of you. Be safe.